in today's uh, lecture number twenty-seven module four. properties of surface areas and solids so this is the title of this module when you say properties of surface areas and solids is because uh, see you are going to study uh, in the next course to this rigid body mechanics is mechanics of materials so at that time you will uh, you cannot just neglect the deformation that takes place in bodies in our first course uh, engineering mechanics we consider an important assumption that uh, all bodies are rigid bodies so what do you mean by rigid bodies the relative position of any particle in the body does not change is what is uh, um, the requirement of a rigid body but it is not so when there the action of uh, forces that would change that uh, body can undergo deformation in such cases you have to see that the properties of the section forming the bodies are going to be very very important so they are going to play an important role so that properties is what is very important to understand and learn uh, as a separate module that's why you have this module 4 so you are going to see here um, uh, this property is quite useful whenever you are dealing with uh, uh, importantly there are many civil engineering students also in our class uh, and uh, mechanical engineering students so you all are going to solve problems of bending problems of torsion twist so you see that uh, you would see the section properties are very important so you are going to uh, erect a bigger machinery so it is that that you are going for appropriate foundation so that the entire load that is uh, coming from the machinery is falling under the uh, um, surface area of the uh, within the boundary so that uh, under the action of uh, uh, any load there won't be any changes in the you know, state of your rigid body so you need to understand uh importantly uh, the solid property called where is the total weight will be acting that point is what is called the center of gravity point so we are going to start this course uh, this particular module first with the understanding an important terms called center of gravity center of mass center of a centroid a center of geometric center instead of centroid centroid so now what are the basic difference between these three terms can anyone say center of gravity center of mass and centroid uh, these are all uh, an important terms as far as this uh, properties of surfaces or solids are concerned so uh, how they are defined are they same or they are different uh, can anyone answer priyansh sir uh, so the center of gravity is basically like a point where uh, the for example in a human body the center of gravity will be the point where the gravitational force is acting on the entire body yeah so any body that you take the weight is what is the force that we say for the body that's because of virtue of its mass and the mass is attracted towards the center of earth so you see there is a force called a weight and the weight would act at a point the total weight of the body will act at the point called the center of gravity right that's what the center of gravity so to understand that let us just look at a arbitrary rigid body right so whose weight is w and this is acting at the point called the center of gravity point c g i put right so this is x y is that right hand cartesian coordinate system so this rigid body can be assumed at it is formed by many number of uh, its small uh forces w1 
W2 and so on like the WN. So this all sum W1, W2 up to WN is what is that resultant force W that force will act at the point called uh, center of gravity because you know a force is not only referred by the magnitude W also by direction acting downwards by this arrow. Importantly, where is the point of application of that uh, load is what is to be uh, uh, represented. That point is what is called the center of gravity. <clears throat> right? So the center of gravity is same as center of mass. So when I say center of gravity, all the bodies are looked at at the earth uh, vicinity to the earth. So if you go outside the earth uh, attraction, if you are uh, having a body in moon, then the attraction is different. So you would not have a definition of center of gravity there. So any rigid body which are under the uh, attraction of uh, earth center, in the gravitational field, then you can call those bodies weight or acting downwards and uh, the resultant of the entire body weight is acting at a point called the center of gravity. So the center of gravity and center of mass can be same if I consider this body is of specific weight constant, constant specific weight. Constant. Specific. Big weight. So what do you mean by constant specific weight? What do you mean by constant specific weight? Can anyone answer? What, what is, how do you define specific weight? Specific weight is defined as rho times, rho is what is the density, rho times g value. So that is specific weight, right? The specific weight of the rigid body is given by rho times g. So what is the unit of rho? It is kg per meter cube. And what is the unit of g? It is meter per second square. So kg meter per second square it is what is a force per meter cube. So force per unit volume is what is specific weight and G happens to be constant and rho also to be constant and this body is called a homogeneous body, right? If we have uh, a rigid body is homogeneous, that means the density remains constant for the body, the distribution of individual particle forming the body is uniform, then it is called uh, homogeneous body. So in such cases, the center of gravity and center of mass is one and the same. Right? If I have specific weight constant, then you can also say that instead of this uh, mass in, uh, in terms of say center of mass, you can also say geometric center. So this is geometric center called the centroid. So you consider this volume and this volume center uh, is what is your centroid. So to understand that, let us just look at now uh, simply um, this force equilibrium. So W is what is W1 plus W2 plus W3 plus and so on plus WN, right, uh, for this rigid body. <coughs> if I take moment of this W with respect to x-axis, right, with respect to, see uh, W into x, uh, x bar is what is this CG now, uh, the coordinate of the CG uh, is written by this. So this coordinate CG coordinate is X bar comma Y bar comma Z bar, right? So what is X bar? It is a distance along X axis. What is Y bar? Distance along Y axis. What is Z bar? Distance along Z axis. That is how I uh, locate this coordinate. So this X bar, W into X bar is what is its moment about, about what axis? I take x bar about uh, this plane. So if I look at this in this way and I take this plane and I have my y x. So w into x bar is what is uh, um, first moment about uh, this y is a plane like that you can say. So that would be equal to that would be equal to what on the moment produced by individual uh, uh, weights about the same plane. So then it is going to be W1 X1 plus W2 X2 
plus and so on w n x n. <coughs> so now what does my x bar is that coordinate giving me uh, the centroid position from y z plane along x axis where is it so that is going to be so this is summation now so that's w i x i where i varies from 1 to n divided by total w that is again sigma i varies from 1 to n w i so this summation i can rewrite it as summation w i where i varies from 1 to n like that right so this is what is uh, um, x bar x bar similar way see now this uh, cartesian coordinate system for our convenient to represent the position of this point cg of this rigid body i can always rotate this rigid body right this uh, not a rigid body is as it is i can always rotate this uh, axis set so if i rotate this axis set and i replace x by y like that then i can rewrite uh, similar fashion uh, because weight happens to always act down i can uh, fix my coordinate uh, x y z uh, in a different fashion so that i can uh, get similarly these things what is that a y bar can be represented by w i 1 to n uh, w i y i by total weight w R is that bar as sigma i equals 1 to n w i is that i by total w. So I have these three uh, equations. So these three equations are uh, uh, going to be the ratios of this summations provided I have finite number of these weight uh, particles forming this. Instead, if I consider this as a continuum of bigger volume, I have uh, uh, n approaches infinity then i can i can refer the same by an integral approach right if n tends to infinity that means it is going to be continuum in such cases uh, i would have the same expressions of x bar as as x d w by integral d w Right. Instead of uh, having summation, I would have this and y bar is going to be integral y dw where dw is elemental weight. A small element I take it which weighs dw uh, and, uh, and that is oriented at the distance x, y, z coordinate. Then I would have to have integration of the element over the um, uh, distance uh, respectively for x bar to get separately, y bar to get separately, and z bar to get separately. Right? So this is integral dw, and z bar is equal to integral z dw by integral dw. So I will have these uh, expressions of summations ratios become uh, expression of uh, integral ratios. All right? So this is how I get my coordinate of my center of gravity mathematically represented so in this if you look at what is there in the numerator the numerator is product of uh, an elemental weight into a distance so this is called the first moment of the weight this is called the first moment of the weight y into dw integral z into dw is it called the first moment of its weight so let's understand that uh, now so before that let us now see that uh, this can be further um, used to for uh, stating that our uh, statement center of gravity and center of mass is one the same. So for that what I should do I know that uh, this material I consider body is of homogeneous and material. So rho is constant. Right if rho is constant uh, I can say my uh, uh, weight w is equal to mg. So where m is what is now uh, given by density into volume. So density of the material kg per meter cube if I multiply by the total volume of that I will get this and multiply by this g. So now you see in this rho g into v. So what is rho g is specific weight in these two terms are constant. So what would happen I can have my 
uh, D elemental weight can be replaced by an elemental volume. Right? Because of uh, constant uh, uh, density and G value constant, I can have this uh, into rho G. Rho G is taken out and this uh, uh, elemental weight is expressed in terms of specific weight multiplied by its elemental volume. So if I substitute that, what would happen in both the cases? Rho G is there in numerator as well as in denominator that goes off. So I would have simply X dB by integral dV is what is X bar and Y bar as integral Y dV by integral dV and Z bar as integral Z dV by integral dV. So this becomes geometrical. This becomes geometrical. So if I cancel, if I replace this dW by uh, dM into G, I can also express this W as uh, uh, G into dm, right? So if, well, if I substitute that, what is the, I get the same. So I would have GG goes off, I will have X dm by integral dm. So X bar, Y bar, Z bar, what I get is called the center of mass. That is why center of gravity, center of mass or centroid, all are referring to the same of the rigid body. If the rigid body, has got an important property that the specific weight is constant. In such cases, you would refer the center of gravity simply by its geometric center called the centroid. So that's what we were looking at from these three equations, which is expressed now in terms of uh, volumetric relation. <clears throat> so now if I have my rigid body, instead of a bigger volume having three dimensions, I have a rigid body which is confined to two dimension compared to the third dimension, say for example a plate. So if a plate with a constant thickness, if I consider it's also a rigid body, a plate has got its surface area in xy plane, the thickness is along z axis if I say. So I can represent this dv by what z into dx, uh, z into d z into d so elemental area into uh, z coordinate so when z coordinate happens to be constant for a thick plate uh, then what would happen i would have here my expressions defined by only by two right so i would have my uh, expressions requirement is x bar y bar right so instead of a rigid body i have x y and i have this is my plate of constant thickness T. If I consider my CG would be expressed by only two coordinates. So that is X bar comma Y bar. So these three equations, I require only these two equations. And these two equations, I will have X bar is equal to simply given by integral X dA instead of dV. So what is this? The dV can be expressed how? So dV is expressed now by Z into Z is what is T, Z coordinate is what is T, so T into dA. So if I substitute T into dA here, down also T into integral dA, T, T goes off, so this is going to be simply integral dA. And Y bar is going to be Y2 coordinates only because it's become 2D dimension. Third dimension is constant, so it's 2D rigid body. So I would have only two coordinates sufficient to locate my CG. So this would become y dA integral by integral dA. So these two equations are the third uh, quantity. What would happen to this? This is T and here that uh, this is constant. So Z bar is not required. Uh, this is not required in case of 2D. So when you have a rigid body volume, then you require third coordinate. If it is a plate, uh, two dimensional uh, figures, then that is expressed in terms of area properties. So here is what is coming as an area properties. And in this, uh, if you look at what is there in numerator, is what is called the first moment of area. So QY is what is integral X dA, or QX is what is integral Y dA. 
So what is this QX and QY? QX and QY. QY would be X bar into integral dA. So if I take this on this side, that is uh, area, total area into X bar. So this is going to be X bar into total area is what is X dA. And here it is Y bar into total area is what is integral Y dA. So you call that as a first moment. First moment. Of area. Area about Y axis is first one. This is first equation. This is a second equation and this is about X axis. First moment of area about. Y and X axis. respectively. Right, so this side, what is there is what is uh, QY and this is what is QX and that's equal to this. So the first moment of areas are quite useful to get your X bar, Y bar. You can say in the other way, right? So you can also again look at uh, this applicable in case I have instead of an area, I consider uh, one dimensional element like I have uh, long bars, right? When I consider long bars, so for example, look at uh, truss. The truss is made of slender bar. So the, the dimension along the axis is larger than that of the cross sectional dimension. So in such cases, if I look at, uh, I would consider instead of area property, it's linked properties, one dimensional property. So what I can do is, I can consider uh, instead of uh, I have my rigid body reduced to a plate. If I have my rigid body, something goes as a wire. Right, so this has got a constant area. So DA is constant. So this area is A. So if that is so, I will have only DL length. Elemental length is this and area section area is constant. So this is that I consider. Uh, of section area is constant, say DA constant. Uh, and this is L. So how do I represent my um, uh, uh, volume? It is DA into DL. Elemental volume DV is DA into L. Or DA into DL. DA into uh, DL. So DA is constant here, that small a into DL. So if I substitute that in my equation uh, 1, 2, 3 for the volume uh, ratios, integral volume ratios that I have. So any one I should take because one dimension. So if I take X bar equals integral X dV by integral dV is going to become now integral X small a is area into DL, which is now replacing my dV divided by Small a is that that is into dl. So this small a, small a goes, it is going to be x dl by dl integral. So this is its first moment of the wire, <laughs> one dimensional element about, about which axis, y axis. All right, about y axis. So I would be able to get. So if I see that uh, dl, integral dl is total length of the wire. So it's going to be X bar into L and the other side it's X DL. <coughs> X DL. So this is its first moment of uh, small length about Y axis. And uh, if it is about uh, 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 length along Y bar. So if I have to get for this uh, wire, since it is not uh, in one directional, right? It is a curve. It is going in two dimension. I can also get its Y bar. So Y bar into L is what is integral Y DL. You'll get like this, right? So any doubt uh, that so far what I have explained with respect to this. So when you require this all, if I have my section uh, is unsymmetrical, then only I require like that. Right. If I have my section is unsymmetrical, then I have it like this. If I have my section is very, very clear. If I have my section, which is a circle, say, for example. I have a circular shaft. What do you mean by section? 
take a knife and uh, uh, cut the shaft into two across or perpendicular to the axis of the shaft. So that's what is called a cross section, right? So when you have that, uh, then the section area is circle and the circle is symmetry by observation. So I have one infinite number of symmetry lines. So I take two symmetry lines which are at perpendicular, axis, uh, perpendicular to each other. So that intersection is what is or two symmetry lines, not necessarily only this, any other diameter if I take that intersection would give me what is my centroid CG location, right? If it is a square, it is very simple for you that by observation, I have one symmetry axis of symmetry, another axis of symmetry. So the intersection is what is my CG. If I have an isosceles triangle, isosceles triangle, so now here, what is that I'll do? I have only one axis of symmetry. But I do not have the second axis of symmetry. I know the CG is on this line, but where is it from the base is uh, not known. So that would be at a distance one third of H. So this is somewhere here. So how do you get this is one third of H is what you should understand. Right? So if I have two symmetry axis represented in a section, then I would have my centroid is located without applying this um, first moment principle. If it is not so, then I should apply the first moment principle and derive the expression. Correct. So this is all easier if I have my regular sections like this. If my sections are not regular, then I would not be able to uh, get it. So I should go for that uh, discretizing my section into some composite section. And then I can either do a submission approach or an integral approach, uh, get the standard formulas. So, for example, you look at now again uh, a triangle, which is an equilateral triangle. So, all the sides are equal. These included angles, uh, vertex angles are 60 degrees. Then I see here I have one symmetry and I have here one symmetry. So, these two intersections would give me my CG location. So, if I have my section, if I have two axes of symmetry at least, then I would straight away get my centroid. So that is by observation. So here you define what is called an axis of symmetry. Right? So this is all for axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. So if we have a section axis of symmetry, it is by observation one can locate its centroidal location. So the next one is there what is called an axis of uh, center of symmetry. Center of symmetry. So what do you mean by center of symmetry? So look at now this section. This is an Z section. So here I could see that uh, this point uh, I marked is what is called the center of symmetry. So here I do not have an axis of symmetry. I do not have one line drawn. What is there on this side is what is there here. So if, for example, if I take a T section, if I take a T section, right, this is vertical. If I take a T section, I could say immediately there is an axis of symmetry. So what is there on this side of my axis is the same mirror image on this side. So that is what is an axis of symmetry. Whereas I do not have here, but this point is what is called an axis of symmetry, sorry, center of symmetry, because this is my x-axis and say this is my y-axis through this. I could say that any point I chose x comma y, I would have a point correspondingly on an opposite quadrant minus x comma minus y. If such things that I have, then that point is what is called the center of symmetry. So if I have a section, if I have a point x comma y uh, with respect to a reference in a section, and I have a corresponding point uh, uh, minus x comma minus y, then I say that point is what is center of symmetry. Then a plane of symmetry. So what do you mean by plane of symmetry? I have a sphere now. Instead of a circle, I have a sphere. So if this sphere has got now represented by three axes, x, y, 
and is there access, right? So if I go here inside, I get my center point. So I can have now many number of plane of symmetry in this case, right? So XY plane, if I extend and cut, I will have two hemispheres. So that's plane of symmetry. So if I take Y Z plane and cut the sphere, I get two uh, um, hemisphere solids. That's plane of symmetry. So take a cone. So this cone, uh, this is its base visible and uh, this is its axis. So along this axis, if I have a plane, that is plane of symmetry. So if I have a plane of symmetry and cut it, I get two cones. And you see that uh, along the plane of symmetry, this shape is what is an isosceles triangle that you are able to see. So you know that if I have like this plane of symmetry, I know in the plane of symmetry, my CG will be located. So if I have two plane of symmetry, three plane of symmetry, that intersection is what is my CG location. So here I have only one plane of symmetry. So in that plane, it is there. Supposing if I represent this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis, and this is my z-axis. So I have now, uh, what is known in this is uh, x bar is 0 and z bar is 0. So x bar is 0, z bar is 0. That I could say immediately because of plane of symmetry. So I have two plane of symmetry, x is z and uh, y is z. I do not have third plane of symmetry, right? So you see here x z is one plane of and y z is another plane of symmetry. And the X is that is not a plane of symmetry, that is a base. So only two plane of symmetry I have, so that intersection uh, gives me the axis of the cone. So I know the CG is located in the axis of the cone, but where is it located, I do not know. That will be one third of height of this cone, one third of height of this cone. So how this one third of height of this cone comes would be uh, uh, solved by your uh, moment principle. That we will see later, right? So you see that here I have my y bar, so that can be obtained by 1 by 3 times h. If it happens to be hollow cone, then it is one fourth of the h. So you can get this centroid all from the standard um, uh, integral approach, right? So why I have to explain you these three terms axis of symmetry center of symmetry and plane of symmetry because if we understand these uh, uh, definitions you would be able to locate centroid without uh, having an uh, assistance of mathematical equations just by observation one can say right so if i take a cuboid so i have three plane of symmetry so i know the intersection of three plane of symmetry could give me my centroid location right so like that if i take a parallelopoid I would be able to locate my centroid by observation. But if I have some irregular rigid body, something like this, then uh, uh, for this rigid body, I have to get my, uh, so this is my reference, X, Y, and Z. The CG location is at the distance X bar, Y bar, and Z bar. So how do I get is what I have explained you through this mathematical expressions, what you have seen in this, right? So hope you have followed what I have so far explained. So if you have understood that, let's just look at now a simple case of um, uh, properties of areas. Uh, I just ask you some question and then we will go ahead with the finding for that, right? So what are those? Let me just draw the standard diagram and I expect that you are going to uh, tell me uh, the centroid location, right? So it's very simple. So what is that uh, so far uh, from my discussion that you have understood is first moment of area. First moment of area. And that would be given by Qx, that is the moment of area about y axis, sorry, about x axis, that would be equal to y dA. First moment of area about y axis subscript here. Then it is x. So this is what you have understood. And this should be requiring uh, by an integral approach if you have a continuum. If you have uh, discretized uh, finite number of uh, uh, sections, what I mean by that, if I have one section, I can describe that section by uh, standard subsections. Then I can also have a summation principle. So what is that? 
uh, first moment means it is uh, uh, yi ai that would be y bar into total area right so this can be replaced by yi ai this integral can be replaced by xi ai and that is what is x bar a so this is what so far you have understood mathematical definition and uh, our first moment where you get your x bar y bar coordinate so now uh, let me just put uh, standard geometries so number one is what is a rectangle so when i have my rectangle so you can see this rectangle can be a section of a beam in a building right so the depth of this uh, rectangle this is called a depth and this is called a breadth so breadth is smaller depth is more so in such cases when i refer this section i will always have to have my reference point say i consider this is my reference point so this is my x and y so where is this geometric center of this section if i say you say that it has got two axes of symmetry so straight away without uh, applying your first moment principle you would be able to locate its centroid right this is my centroid like that so if this is b and this is d you would say that uh, this distance is what is my x bar and this distance is what is my y bar so you would say that the area here area here is b times b times d is what is area and uh, x bar and y bar we get x bar as b by 2 and y bar as d by 2 right you can also get that same by uh, uh, an integration approach right i just uh, uh, do it now uh, for another case where you do not have this axis of symmetry let's take a second case where i have a triangle look at this i have this triangle right angle triangle where this is b and this is h and i have this referenced by x y axis so can you just get what does it centroid how do you get it centroid so you have already studied then you would say that it is uh, somewhere here so this two will intersect so this is my centroid you say that is from the adjacent side one third distance uh, along the base and from the adjacent side one third distance along the height so it is uh, located like that so you would say that x bar here is b by 3 y bar here is h by 3 so this is uh, not come from my axis of symmetry or something this is my already knowledge that i have put but how does it come is what i would explain so area in this case is half into b into h you know right so let's look at now uh, how these b by 3 and h by 3 comes so i should have my definition so that is what does that we have right to get my x bar i take uh, my qy so qy is integral x da right so integral x da so i should consider in this triangle an elemental area of dx at a distance x from here so i consider an elemental strip at a distance x from origin of width is dx and you see this height is now is not same as here so here it is h and here it is h dash right so i have this so now uh, my da is what in this case da da is h dash is the height elemental area is h dash into dx that is my da so but now h dash is varying as x increases uh, this would be varying so how can i have a relation is when by similar triangle h dash and remaining length and here h by b so h by b is what is equal to h dash by b minus x so h dash is h into b minus x by b is what is h dash so what is my da what is my da that's equal to 
h dash into dx so h by b into b minus x into dx is what is my da so now i can substitute that in this so x into h by b i'll take that out because that is uh, constant in the geometry and uh, b minus x dx and dx varies so x is equal to 0 to b this is of b so it varies from 0 to b so if i carry out this integral what do i get is my first moment of this triangle about y axis and that would solve for b what is x bar because that is x bar into total area of this triangle right so x bar will be whatever that i get this integration on my right hand side divided by the total area is what is x bar so let's just complete this integration so that's such by b and it's going to be now b x squared by 2 minus x cubed by 3 0 to b so if i substitute this h by b and here i would have uh, b cube by 2 b cube by 2 minus b cube by 3 minus 0 b cube by 2 minus b cube by 3 minus 0 so that's going to be lcm 6 so it's 3 2 so it's b cube by 6 and this h by b will be there h by is a bq h by b so it's h b square by 6 h b square by 6 is what is first moment of this triangle about y axis h b square by 6 what you have is called the first moment of this entire triangle about y axis so that is x bar into total area so what is my x bar is h b square by 6 divided by area that is this also you can do it by integration and uh, I, we, we, we will not now do that it, you can do that integral da is what is half bh so if i divide by that i will have bh in denominator 2 goes up so h, h goes b goes so this 3 so what do i get is b by 3 right so that is how i could get my x bar which i have got it uh, written here so uh, this is derived and you should always remember now whenever I have been given a right angle triangle I would have my x bar is b by 3 y bar is h by 3 similar way you can also prove that uh, you have your y bar is h by 3 right you, you you are not marking this point at this distance just by observation why because you do not have an axis of symmetry in this case right whereas you have an axis of symmetry in a rectangle so you may ask why can i not apply formula and get this yes of course you can do it but it is very simple and here at least the such dash is varying so you have to express like that here it is very straightforward you can also apply here this first moment uh, in a rectangle considering an elemental area which is constant rather in this case it's a function of x again so you would have b by 2 and d by 2 you can prove that all so this is what is the definition of first moment of area uh, quite useful part to locate on the centroid uh, coordinate so do you have any doubts in this case to answer you have any doubts if that is so you should be able to get it for any of the uh, geometry right so for example i have now uh, a semicircle okay and this is represented by x and y axis so when i look at this has got an axis of symmetry right so this is an axis of symmetry so this is center of the semicircle so uh, this is my centroidal axis so y c i represent so axis said that goes to the centroid is centroidal axis by symmetry i have this but on this radius somewhere it is there uh, but where is it i do not know so i do not know in this case y bar but i what i know by this observation straight away x bar so x bar with respect to this given coordinate uh, x y coordinate it is simply at a distance radius so this is of radius r so it is at the distance r 
whereas I have to get my y bar. So how do I get my y bar? What again I do? Again, go for mathematics, mathematical definition, right? I would uh, only uh, give this simple examples here, but uh, I would uh, give you a list of formulas. Uh, I, uh, please refer to the textbook Beer and Johnson. At the end, you have this all nice pictures of this geometry and their section properties. So you should uh, cut paste in your notebook or uh, take a copy of that. So those formulas will be used in uh, composite sections and you have to locate it center. That's the next class exercise that we are going to do. And in today's class, we are just uh, understanding an important first property called the uh, first moment of area. Right, that's what uh, we were doing. And uh, you understand uh, uh, it is needed to locate the centroid of any section. Right, so that is so. How do you get now uh, this Y bar for a semicircle? That I will explain in two minutes and that will stop. So how do you get that? Uh, so I know that would be obtained. Y bar will be integral Y dA by total area. So total area of the semicircle is phi r squared by 2. We can also get this by integral dA. So we can get this integral dA uh, where uh, uh, you, you would be able to prove this. That is already you did it in mathematics. We can also do that. I leave it to you as a homework to do. But let us now do this integral for first moment. What is there in the numerator? Integral y dA. So how do I get dA now? What is my elemental area? I consider an elemental area at an angle theta from this x axis from here. Take it from here at an angle theta. I have an elemental area and that elemental area is a sector of the circle. A small sector strip. So if this uh, if you consider this a small sector strip, you know that it is going to be a triangle, right? It is a triangular shape. So you see this arc length is uh, here is uh, R into dr right that's your arc length uh, so or so this angle is d theta so here subtend angle is d theta so what is this arc length r d theta here yeah, this length so if, we, if this is the base if you look at this is like a triangle so this is vertex and this is here so the centroid of this elemental area as you have now looked at for a triangle from the vertex it is two third distance somewhere here so this coordinate, this is my elemental um, centroid for the element. So that would be simply x comma y. So this point is x comma y. So this coordinate x will be 2 by 3 of this angle theta, small dA theta, so that is neglected. So it is 2 by 3 cos theta and y is 2 by 3 sin theta, right? That's the coordinate. So now, uh, what is my dA? dA is this elemental area that is a kind of a triangle now. So it is half into base R into this height length R d theta. So I can rewrite this as half R into R d theta, right? So it is R squared by 2 d theta is what is my dA. I can have this. So now I can just substitute that here. Uh, if I take this as dA again for your uh, consideration. So I would have here uh, dA is this, so 1 by 2, let me take it out. And it is y r squared, y r squared t theta, right? By here dA, 1 by 2, let me take it out. It is integral r squared d theta, r squared d theta. So this r squared, r squared in both you see, r squared is constant for this, so that goes out. So I would have half also goes out, uh, you would say. So this is simply going to be integral y d theta, where theta varies from 0 to, in radians I put, so 0 to pi. And here it is simply d theta varies from 0 to pi. So if I do this denominator integral, that's going to yield me pi uh, uh, squared. Okay, let's just do it one by one. So what is that I get? Y d theta. Y d theta I'll get. So what is my y? 
2 by 3 sin theta. So 2 by 3 sin theta, if I substitute here, 2 by 3 sin theta into r, 2 by 3 r sin theta, 2 by 3 r cos theta here. So this is 2 by 3 integral r sin theta d theta varies from 0 to pi by uh, d theta. So that's going to be theta from 0 to pi in denominator. So here this integral, since it is r is constant, I take it out 2r by 3. So integral sin theta is what? Minus cos theta. So minus cos theta and theta value 0 to pi. And here it is uh, uh, theta value if I substitute, it's going to be pi minus 0. So I would have here, see now 2r by 3 cos pi. Cos pi is what? Minus 1, right? So minus already outside with minus 1. Minus uh, cos 0 is 1. 1. So what is that I get? Uh, minus of minus it is, right? See, minus cos pi minus cos 0. Minus of minus cos 0. So that's plus. So I would have here 2r by denominator pi. So 2r into 2. So 4r by 3 pi. So this is what is the value of y bar. So this y bar here is 4r by 3 pi. Whereas x bar is r, I can say with respect to xy coordinate, r semicircle is expressed by uh, x axis, which is along the diameter and y axis, which is symmetry axis, then it is uh, x bar 0, you could say. So x bar is r in this given case, which is uh, by observation itself, I could write. Whereas y bar, I can't just put it by observation. It's 4r by 3 pi. I have to derive all the way and get this formula. Like this, for the standard geometries, you got your formulas derived, standardized. And those formulas, is, uh, all you should remember, and they are important for solving uh, our course problems. So I'll stop at this point of time, and uh, I'll download your attendance.